Hello, I'm Claire Fridian. I'm a sheep vet based at University of Bristol. And in this clip, we're going to look at some of the lambing preparations and some of the longer term management preparations that have a large impact on lamb survival in the immediate neonatal period. As part of lambing time preparation, it's useful to go through your kit and equipment ahead of the busy period to check you have all the vital components you need. Whether you keep your equipment or kit in a box, in bales, in a shelving unit, there are some key components that all farmers can have and we're quickly going to refresh on these now. So gloves are a useful part of the kit to consider having. As you all know, it's difficult at lambing time when thick lambings are coming thick and fast to wash your hands between every single assisted lambing. So whether you decide to use short gloves or long arm length gloves like these, they both offer a really effective barrier and reduce the risk of you picking up diseases from use and transmitting diseases between other sheep and lambs. Handy tip is that the long arm length glove also acts as a handy scoop for picking up the afterbirth of a centre and nice disposable bag there to keep your bedding nice, clean and dry. Check that you've got a plentiful supply of lubricant in stock. And of course, with difficult lambings, dystopia cases, lubricant is a must. For those cases where you've got a dry, difficult lambing, sometimes this type of lubricant can appear just to fall off the lamb. And what can be useful is to obtain a powdered form of lubricant and it's supplied in these flakes which you apply by simply patting around the, the inside of the vagina then on the lamb and on contact with moisture in the vagina becomes a more sticky a more gloopy consistency and this can be really helpful in those cases I say where it's dry and it sticks to the lamb where sometimes as you can see the other sort of lubricant as good as it is can fall off as well as lubricant. Another handy tip for those difficult lambings is to use a lambing aid, such as a lambing snare or a lambing rope. I've got one of these pre-designed snares here. And with my trusty toy lamb, I'll demonstrate. So the idea is that you use, use your weight to palpate and feel the lamb's head, particularly good for those lamb's heads that seem to go backwards. And any knot or any securing device should be fixed securely in the lamb's mouth like that, it's not underneath where it can strangulate but securely in the mouth. Strong iodine solution which contains 10% alcohol which is the drying agent that dries up the lamb's navels. Ideally you want to spray or dip the navel within the first two hours of birth and best practice advice would be to repeat that four hours later wherever possible. Rule of thumb is that they should be brittle by 36 hours old. <coughs> Don't attempt to go for the tincture of iodine or weaker iodine solutions that aren't as effective for drying up the navel. Stomach tubes, syringes and a supply of colostrum. Best supply of colostrum of course is euclostrum. Handy tip is actually to put it into those freezer bag, ice cube bags and to store those. They're quite easy to defrost. Alternatively, an artificial colostrum supply specifically for lambs or a pooled cow colostrum. A bottle of 40% glucose also known as dextrose with the intraperitoneal or IP injection of young lambs. A bottle of calcium borogluconate, calcium solution for hypercalcemia in use. When you use that use it as a warm solution and inject under the skin roughly 60 to 80 mils for an average size U. A selection of harnesses and spoons for any prolapse cases. And also useful to have is a oral solution or supplement for twin lamb. A selection of sterile needles and syringes with a selection of different sizes, different gauge needles. Antibiotics as directed by your veterinary surgeon might be useful to include some long acting preparations. Also really consider the use of anti-inflammatory essentially painkillers which are very effective for reducing the pain, inflammation associated with conditions such as dystocia, difficult lambings, lameness, mastitis. Um, really useful to think of having that in your lambing kit. For treating entropion in young lambs, as well as having a needle and syringe, you might like to consider using Michael's clips, entropion clips, which come in a pack like this and are applied for the set of forceps. Other equipment to have handy is a warming box if possible and of course a kettle or a portable urn. Some form of recording lamb performance. So a handy notebook like this is useful to carry in the back of your pocket 
and to record any lambs found dead and any known or diagnosed reasons why. And not forgetting your vet's telephone number and this telephone number of the AHVLA close by. Getting the lambing kit together is of course only a small part of your preparations for lambing time. Most of the management preparations and action will have been targeted five months ago at topping time. The focus of all that management was of course this, the delivery of live lambs of a good birth weight that are developing a good ewe lamb bond. The development of a strong ewe lamb bond and good mothering ability is affected by a number of factors such as ewe nutrition, body condition, general health status and genetics, as well as factors of the environment such as the amount of space at lambing time and the level of supervision. Clearly a ewe that lambs unaided is of good body condition and health that's left alone as long as possible at the site of birth offers the best opportunity to develop a strong ewe lamb bond. Ewes have a strong sense of smell and bond strongly to the site of birth, which sometimes is why they can be very difficult to move to the individual pens. Obviously staying at the site of birth isn't feasible for every farm and mismothering can be an issue, therefore moving to individual pens of a good size is a next practical option. It's common sense and of course familiar to experienced shepherds that the sooner a lamb stands, bonds the ewe and sucks colostrum, the greater its chances are of surviving the neonatal period. The first milk or colostrum contains essential source of energy and fats in addition to antibodies which are the first line of defence in the lamb's immune system. So it really is the fuel for life. The gut of the newborn lamb is very efficient and adapted to absorbing colostrum in the first few hours after birth. This ability diminishes over time and a phenomenon known as gut closure occurs whereby about 12 hours old lamb's ability to absorb the colostrum antibodies are very much reduced. So if you have any doubt about the lamb's intake of colostrum in the first few hours, good rule of thumb is to administer 50 mils per kilo of colostrum substitute, ideally ewe colostrum, by stomach tube. Ewe colostrum should be yellow in thick and consistency, almost like clotted cream. If it's thin and watery and or you're experiencing particular problems with watery mouth and joint ill, as well as looking at the hygiene and the general environment, the cleanliness at lambing time, it's worth looking into ewe nutrition pre-lambing and body condition as well. Body condition scoring is a vital tool to every sheep producer and particularly so for the pregnant ewe. A really useful time to actually body condition school use during the mid-pregnancy period, such as a scanning visit, which offers the ideal opportunity to get your hands on the ewes back. Body condition scoring used together with scanning data can be used to feed the ewe appropriately according to the number of lambs and also her condition. It's important to manage the body condition score of ewes throughout the production cycle, and particularly in the pregnancy period, so that at lambing time they're neither too fat or too thin as this can be associated with particular conditions such as vaginal prolapses, dystocia and pregnancy toxemia. As well as preventing and controlling vaginal prolapses, the prompt treatment of any lameness and mastitis cases that occur at lambing time will help improve you health and optimise the expression of maternal behaviour, all of which of course have subsequent benefits on lamb health, welfare and production.